Hi, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining Continuous Learning with BioGuard. It is my pleasure to introduce our webinar speaker, Dr. Susan Sedostra. Dr. Susan obtained his PhD from National Tsinghua University in Academia Sinica, Taiwan. He has expertise in biomarker discovery and protein structural biology with a strong research background in investigating potential biomarkers for target diseases. Currently, Dr. Susan works as a diagnostic specialist with BioGuard Corporation. Uh, Leptospirosis is a bacterial infectious disease that affects those and pest owners. In this lecture, uh, Dr. Susan will explore the various strains of Leptospira that can cause Leptospirosis and the diagnosis and treatment options available for dogs. Additionally, uh, he did he dive into the prevention uh, prevention measures and challenges associated with the vaccinating dogs against this disease. Without further ado, let's welcome Dr. Susan. Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you for uh, joining today's uh, lecture and talk. And on behalf of BioGuard, I would like to welcome you all here. Uh, my name is Dr. Sushan, and uh, I'm working uh, with BioGuard as a, a diagnostic product specialist. So today, uh, we are going to touch the topic of uh, leptospirosis. And uh, to begin with uh, my talk, uh, I would like to share my slides with you. Uh, please wait a moment. So uh, is it visible? Okay. Uh, so today we will talk about uh, and understand uh, canine leptospirosis. However, uh, we will also be focusing on how we can prevent our pet and also our family. Uh, this disease is a uh, uh, is a zoonotical disease, uh, which is of a global importance because it's a very serious disease, uh, which is caused by the bacteria, which is known as leptospirosis. And these bacteria are actually found throughout the world. Uh, and there are many strains uh, of leptospirosis which are found in the environment. So that's why most of the mammals are very vulnerable for this disease. It has been seen that it's, it, it is affecting 1 million human per year. And uh, it's, it's a reason for 6,000 deaths per year. And uh, most of the cases of leptospirosis are seen uh, in, uh, in mostly in the tropical region of the ears. And uh, this has been seen uh, and understood through the previous uh, outbreaks. Uh, in, in the countries such as Sri Lanka, India, Indonesia, Thailand, and uh, heavy rainfall regions of South and North America. So that is the reason that this disease is prevalent uh, all over the world. And it is considered as one health issue is because uh, many mammals are vulnerable, including dogs, and uh, livestock and certain wildlife animals as well. So leptospirosis occurrence is usually uh, through the uh, fresh water as this bacteria cannot survive in the sea water. And it has been seen that uh, the places uh, which are warm, uh, which has warm climate with uh, high annual rainfall, 
but of course it can occur anywhere in the world and uh, it can stand uh, it can survive in standing and moving water and for example in the soil mostly with the ph of 5.5 to 7.6 and if the moisture in content is uh, greater than 20 percent uh, it can survive in the environment, uh, for example, in the stagnant water for more than a month, and also in the moist soil uh, by 16, more, more than 16 days, yeah. And uh, in, the, in the soil conditions, such as muddy uh, soils and other kind of moist soils, uh, this has been seen that the bacteria is able to form a biofilm, uh, which is also helping in the further survival of the bacteria in the environment. So, and some of the research studies have also been done to see whether the bacteria can survive freezing temperatures. And yes, they have seen that this can also be able to survive in freezing temperatures. So yeah, that is a reason that uh, outbreaks are mostly frequently happening, but it's mostly restricted to the area uh, which receives heavy rainfall and flooding. For example, in this paper from United States, uh, uh, these many other regions of the United States has been uh, monitored for one year. And you can see in the Middle West, uh, the regions they selected were the Middle West, California, uh, Northeast, and the South Central. And we can see that the uh, Southwestern region of the United States uh, where which is uh, which receives heavy rainfall throughout the air throughout the year have seen the most of the leptospirosis cases uh, in this and also uh, in other parts uh, for example in the middle west the the june and Ju june to Ju july to december were the most frequent uh, months where you get frequent rainfall and so the leptospirosis cases were high in these months as well. So yeah, th this proves this study was used to show that uh, the outbreak can happen or the prevalence of the disease will be there in the heavy rainfall uh, regions. So when we talk about the uh, uh, taxonomy of this bacteria, it's actually uh, uh, spiral that lays that uh, includes two family of spiral bacteria, which are known as uh, Spirogeticaea uh, and Leptospirochaea. And uh, to identify these is because of their unique features in their structure and morphology, and also to the functional, uh, functional features. So leptospirosis belongs to the leptospirochaea uh, family uh, because of its uh, uh, shape. And, and further, leptospira has 68 genome species, uh, which includes both pathogenic and non-pathogenic bacteria. And uh, there are more than 100 uh, serovira groups uh, which have been subdivided into zero groups such as P1, P2, and S1, S2. So P1, P2 are mostly the bacteria which are pathogenic in nature. And leptospira, uh, leptospirosis is caused by, uh, the, by the species fall in this category. However, there are thousands of strains uh, which are being discovered uh, uh, nowadays uh, using the uh, technology. And based on that, it has been divided, further divided into subcategories uh, as when they analyze and analyze the lepto, uh, liposaccharide antigens on the surface of the bacteria. So yeah, this bacteria has a lot of uh, mutations in its structure. And due to that, uh, it, it can form, uh, it, it has so many uh, strains uh, present in the environment. So when we see the basic structure of a leptospira, you can see it's a helical uh, protoplasmic cylindrical structure, uh, which consists of uh, nuclear material inside this structure. And other than that, of course, it has cytoplasm, 
plasma and uh, the membrane there are two membrane one is a cytoplasmic membrane and another one is a peptoglycan cell wall that is covering the cytoplasmic membrane so you can also notice a terminal hook uh, in the structure of this bacteria and other than that the bacteria has a cylindrical structure which is very flexible and it is also tightly coiled and uh, which can give uh, its more flexibility to its shape. And other than that, the bacteria is actually unicellular in nature. And uh, the structure is actually found in from the lettospira in the urine. Yeah. So when we talk about the history of leptospira, it's actually uh, being identified long time ago and simultaneously in Europe and Japan as well. And uh, basically it was uh, considered as a wild syndrome because uh, Dr. Uh, Adolf Weil, Weil has, this, uh, has this disease and while researching on that one, that results in his death. Uh, however, at the same time, as I said, that it, the same things were happened in Japan where and there were many cases happened of leptospira in human, and it was also reported. Uh, so, but nowadays using the machine learning algorithms, we use the same basis as discovered by Dr. Aldo Weil to identify this disease and uh, subdivided the bacteria into its serovats. So basically, this disease was uh, identified in humans. However, uh, later it was found that all the mammals are actually vulnerable for the disease. And uh, typically when we talk about canine leptospirosis, so you can see that leptospirosis is mostly or most often spread through the urine to the canines uh, or to the infected animals. And especially the main, the, the host, which is uh, responsible for spreading the uh, leptospira is considered as rodents. Uh, however, there are some studies which shows that other animals are also responsible for spreading the leptospirosis in the environment. So infected dogs can be seen healthy, but uh, still they can pass leptospira bacteria in their urine and the bacteria can survive for weeks and months in, in, so, in, in urine soil. And also uh, when the rodents spread this uh, disease into the soil and surface water, it can also spread to the cats and other domestic animals. And while in, uh, if the rodents are in the wild, they can also spread to the wild animals as well. So, uh, when we talk about the, how leptospira can be uh, can be transmitted, it can also enter into the uh, dog's body through mucosa membrane. So their mucosa membrane, it can be through mouth, nose, eyes, or skin wounds. And uh, when they are exposed to the urine or any surface which is contaminated, such as water or soil, and comes in contact with the mucosal membrane, that can also lead to the spread of the or the transmission of the disease. And when we talk about uh, the incubation period, it can be after uh, five to six, 14 days of the infection that you can see the clinical signs are, uh, uh, are seen in the dogs. So infection can also be spread to urine contaminated food. Uh, or uh, it, it's also been seen that during breeding or, uh, or other activities of the infected animals can also lead to the spread of the disease. And in, of course, in humans, leptospira can cause wide spectrum of you know, symptoms. Uh, and most of the cases, it has seen that due to immune manifestations, the clinical signs sometimes are not visible. But uh, severity of the disease can lead to renal functions, renal failure, and hepatic dysfunction or, or other uh, issues in the body. So uh, transmission of the disease, as, well, as we were talking about, can also happen through, uh, as I said, breeding, and it can also happen to biting. 
of infected animals to the healthy animal. And uh, last but not the least, like infected mother can also pass uh, the bacteria to the unborn uh, babies, uh, puppies uh, to, to the placenta. Yeah, so uh, the transmission as we said, as we know that it, it will start from the rodents and through water sources, it will spread through the, to the dogs and other domestic animals. However, rodents are considered as a resident, uh, a resident uh, host of the, of the pathogen, uh, but uh, the cattle and the dogs are considered as a susceptible host. Uh, and also in some cases, human can also be a suspect, susceptible host. And Leptospira can be widely spread into environment, especially it, it can be regardless whether they uh, whether the these mammals or animals are living in which place especially for the dogs as we know that they they live at our homes which are very clean however when they go out and get exposed uh, to the environment or the uh, or when they are roaming around uh, to the area which could be suspected of uh, contaminated with leptospirosis, leptospirobacteria through the urine of the rodents that can lead to the spread of the disease. And also this study uh, uh, showing the canine leptospirosis, uh, leptospirosis outbreak in Japan, uh, where it has been seen that uh, when the dogs were walking alongside the riverbank and uh, out of uh, 11 dogs, nine were uh, died within a month uh, because uh, they, they got infection of leptospirosis because they were following the same path and probably the past uh, has uh, you know exposure of the potential infection. So other than that, exposure of wild animals can also lead to the spread of the disease or in, in the farm animals, you know, like when the dogs get in contact with farm animals, uh, that can also lead to the spread of the disease. And also uh, in, in cities, in, in urban areas, when dogs can con come in contact with other, uh, other dogs in, in, you know, in a dog park or in other uh, facilities where there's a common uh, places can keep dog for a day, daycares or others can also lead to the spread of the disease. So yeah, there could be many reasons that can lead to the spread of uh, or outbreak of canine leptospirosis. Uh, so we, that's why this disease is considered as a very serious disease uh, when it comes to an infection. So canine leptospirosis after the dog got infection, you will see the main uh, clinical sign is identified through acute uh, kidney injury. So, but of course, this can happen after, after a few weeks. Uh, however, the initial signs can also be very common to other symptoms of the disease, such as lethargy, loss of appetite, vomiting. There could be an abdominal pain and uh, signs of jointers, dehydration, uh, or diarrhea. There can be a weight loss or stiffness of muscles, etc. So, but you know that these uh, clinical signs are very common uh, to other infections uh, of, in dogs as well. Uh, so that's why uh, the severity of the disease it can be more uh, important to see uh, the more clear vision of leptospirosis. However, during the infection period, the immune response of the dog can also play a very important role uh, while uh, treating or while uh, the dog gets infected with leptospirosis. Because sometimes there are no signs of illness uh, because of the immune system. And if have a mild or can have a mild or very severe signs that can even lead to life-threatening illness, Ill, illnesses in, in, in dog. 
So when in a, uh, in a severe disease, there can be a liver failure, uh, which can be seen through enlargement of the liver or its yellow color. It can also lead to uh, lung diseases. Sorry, my, my mistakes, I wrote lunch. <laughs> yeah, anyway. So uh, it can also cause uh, joinless kind of symptoms, which can lead to yellowishing of the skin, especially notice in the gum area. And other than that, it can affect muscles, mainly the uh, organ muscles such as heart, and also uh, the preliminary hemorrhages are uh, basically seen in, in, in the case of canine leptospirosis. It's also been seen that there could be an excess fluid in the chest and the abdominal area that can be another uh, source of diagnosis, which we will discuss later. So when we talk about humans, uh, of course, this disease is a, a zoonotical disease and humans are also uh, are at risk of getting leptospirosis through uh, occupational exposure such as the people who work in farms and ranges uh, or the veterinarians who are handling the infectious uh, animals in the environment. So farmers who are working in paddy fields, rice fields, banana, banana farms are actually more prone to uh, get leptospirosis. And uh, as we know that these days, people have a lot of hobbies and rec recreation activities, which are related to water, such as uh, swimming, kayaking, and uh, other tr uh, trail biking, etc. Uh, and it has been seen that there are some outbreaks of leptospirosis uh, during these uh, recreation activities as well. When we talk about uh, exposure at uh, at your own home, it can be through uh, rodents if your home uh, are exposed to the uh, infected rodents that that you know can shed urine around the corners of the uh, of your home. So just be careful uh, with good sanitization of your home. And if you have pets, of course uh, these pets can also. Uh, uh, are other sources when they get infected through these uh, infected areas in the home and can also lead to the spread of the disease. In the household, if you have some areas where the rainwater get caught and it's not cleaned well, uh, that can also lead to the spread of leptospirosis if rodents are actually using their water for drinking or uh, urination around it. And last but not the least, people who are uh, living in a uh, unhygienic environment, for example, homeless people uh, or other socioeconomical status people uh, who, who's, who doesn't have a good sanitization at home also get exposed to the you know, poor uh, sanitization, uh, what I mean that, uh, to, the, uh, to the areas where rodents can survive and can uh, you know, use the area to urine and do other things. So that can also lead to the spread of uh, the disease in those areas. So yeah, transmission in humans is also very uh, predominant in, in these days. So even, uh, so mostly uh, the most important is to see that whether you are uh, working uh, in some kind of occupation uh, where you are dealing with, you know, uh, standing water or stagnant water, or also doing some activities uh, with related to water. So just be careful with that. Uh, because in humans also, the penetration is the same way that the bacteria can enter into human body through skin or uh, uh, mucosa membrane. However, in the skin, it usually happened due to some cut, uh, cuts in the skin, uh, skin or otherwise. And then it enters into the bloodstream where it gets localized into different organs, uh, basically uh, such as uh, lungs, liver, uh, kidney, and brain. And then in, in particular, those uh, organs, it can start dividing and cause the infection. Uh, for example, in lungs, it can cause the uh, hemorrhagical uh, pneumatitis. In liver, it can cause joinders uh, and, and uh, other issues. Uh, 
in the in the body. So yeah, and of course, if if it happened in the ureters, it can also lead to the abortion of the baby as well. And uh, basically, the the most common sign which has seen in humans is a fever, of course, because of the bacterial infection and the severity of the disease can lead to uh, uh, preliminary hemorrhages, renal failures, etc. So yeah, this disease can also be very uh, significant in humans after its infection. So yeah, we have to be very careful with that. Uh, when we talk about in journal about the pathogenesis, uh, this can be divided into two categories. One can be asystematic and one can be of the severe cases. So usually in humans, the infection, 90% uh, cases are asystematic where uh, the immune system will play a very important role to control the uh, infection in the body uh, through uh, anti-inflammatory -in responses to the pro-inflammatory responses, which can maintain the balance that will reduce the uh, uh, leptospira infection uh, simultaneously into the body. So therefore, there will be very mild to uh, no symptoms in the body. And of course, uh, in long term, it will cause no organ damage in the body. However, in the severe cases, uh, humans, uh, which can occur in 10% of the cases, uh, is because of the infect cytokines uh, storm in the body, the immune system get activated, uh, which can cause uh, increase, uh, increase in the uh, symptoms which can lead to multiple organ failures and hemorrhages and in five percent cases out of ten can also lead to death in humans so yeah uh, they we can't say that this disease is not uh, it can't cause severe uh, uh, severe uh, severe severity in humans as uh, immune prone uh, or immune prone people can be very much uh, uh, vulnerable for this disease. So, uh, as I mentioned before, that the reservoir holes, which are considered in the environment, are basically uh, considered uh, are basically the Norway or the brown rats, uh, which are proven to be the leptos uh, spread uh, play a very important role in spread of leptospira infection in the environment. However. Uh, different reservoir hosts can found in different regions as well. There are some studies which shows that uh, raccoons are also can cause the spread of disease and can act as a reservoir host. And other uh, studies also shows that in different mammals such as cats or reptiles, even turtles, can act as a reservoir host for leptospira. So yeah, it uh, there are further further research is going on which which are talking about more reservoir host uh, for the spread of diseases in the environment. As you can see, that amphibians and turtles are also being researched to see the spread of the disease and can act as a reservoir host in the environment. So this study basically talking about different. Uh, mammals, uh, which have been uh, analyzed uh, to see the quantity of leptospira they shed uh, through urine in the environment. So you can see that uh, rats on the left hand side have been seeing the most, uh, uh, more, the quantity of the shed leptospira is the most in the rats. However, in the right hand side, uh, the same case has been seen in the cows and the deer as well. But uh, this is because the volume in, in the right-hand side, the, 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 the number of leptospira are counted as per the volume of the urine. You can see that the one rat can have a very less uh, microliter of you or milliliter of urine compared to cow and the deer. So that's why the number of case, uh, the number of uh, bacteria in one, one splash of urine of com cow compared to the rat can be very different. However, that's the reason uh, it, it has been seen that the rats are more prone to have 
been playing a very important role in the spread of the disease and can be a basic host for leptospira, spread of leptospira. So, so yeah, uh, it has been seen that there are different strains of leptospira or the serova associated with different mammals. And especially when we talk about canines, uh, the leptospira canicola uh, is the reservoir host adopted serova that 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 actually uh, infect infect dogs. Uh, so, but dogs are not seen as a reservoir host, or or there are still researches going on uh, to prove that uh, cats as well as the dogs can act as a reservoir host. So that's why mostly they are considered as a incidental host. Uh, however, uh, when the dogs can get the disease, it can lead to the severe infections. However, the shedding period is very, uh, uh, it can be shorter, it can be low, or it can be intermediate. Yeah, and also uh, the transmission is very uncommon. So which means that dogs mostly cannot transmit this disease to other animals, but uh, is still uh, the researches are going on uh, on this on this topic. So yeah, this comes us to the point uh, to discuss the diagnostic methods uh, for the for leptospira. So uh, starting of any infection is is basically talking about the clinical signs that you will see and observe in the infected, uh, infected dog. Uh, however, you can see that uh, the, uh, when you observe these clinical signs and you can go to consult your vet uh, to, to analyze your pet. And uh, the, pet, the, veterinarian, uh, the veterinary doctor may ask you about the history of uh, of your dog, like where have you been uh, taken the dog, what environment it is uh, uh, living, and other 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 questions related to that. Other than that, we uh, the vet can also do a complete physical checkup uh, to see uh, to see the to examine the dog, and also some kind of blood test uh, and urine test. Uh, to check the following parameters because these following parameters are related to particularly to the organs. Uh, so abnormalities seen in these parameters can give an indication that the dog might be affected through leptospirosis. So yeah, so yeah serum biochemistry or uh, serum uh, blood gas analysis abnormalities or abnormalities in urine can be seen uh, to observe the cases of leptospira or to confirm you know, yeah, the initial stage. Uh, it, as I mentioned before, that there can be an excess fluid uh, in the chest or the abdominal area. So that's how the uh, thoracic uh, uh, radiography can play a very important role to see the uh, abdominal uh, image which can also be clarifying that the there can be a complex pulmonary pattern which can be seen and uh, through uh, unstructural intestinal patterns uh, which can be uh, which can lead to the uh, causal lung lobes uh, which you can see in in this example uh, how it is marked here of these signs where the nodular appearance is happening in these regions can also be uh, an, another source of initial diagnosis for leptospirosis. So when we talk about the golden test of leptospira, previously uh, microscopic agglutination test or also known as MAT test was considered as the golden standard for leptospirosis uh, uh, for the leptospirosis. So basically in this test, what, what has been done that you will, uh, the, the vet will take the blood of the infected dogs and then do the serial dilutions uh, to react the blood with the different kind of panels of culture serovas uh, of, uh, present in the laboratory. 
So when the when you get the reaction uh, happening, uh, so you can see through dark microscopy that the uh, development of the uh, antibodies will be there and it can be clearly seen. And also uh, after one week or two weeks, uh, you can see the results of this. However, there are many uh, disadvantages of this method is that it can mostly lead to false negative results as because uh, when it is mostly di you diagnosed it in early stage, or even the, when the panel of the culture serovast does not have the infectious disease uh, or infectious serova in the in the in the in, from the patient, and it can also lead to the false positive results when there is a you know like a prior exposure uh, for the dog, or even the, if the dog is vaccinated. So yeah, there can be both possibility of false negative and false positive. Uh, results uh, through a uh, MAD test. And uh, so that, but still previously it was considered as a golden standard test. However, from new technology, we know that there are a lot of point of care tests present in the in, uh, present uh, or presented by the veterinarians to the patients uh, through uh, reference laboratories such as ELISA test or con uh, quantitative uh, uh, antibodies test. So like e e BioGuard is have developed uh, Leptospira IgM, IgG uh, antibody uh, test that can uh, very uh, accurately uh, diagnose Leptospira infection uh, for Leptospira SPP. So these tests can be uh, used. These are very useful when we have to detect the antibodies through the through the specimen. However, there can be some cases where sensitivity and specificity can be an issue as compared to as as same as MAD test, depending on the condition of pre exposure or or because of the vaccination or other issues for the patient. So. When it comes to the more uh, reliable tests these days, PCR test is the most uh, uh, chosen test for the leptospira uh, because PCR test is based on the uh, you know identification of the genomic or uh, genomic uh, substance or DNA from the uh, from the pathogen, and uh, and most important that when when we have the quantitative and qualitative results coming from the PCR, such as real-time PCR, that can be a more effective way of uh, diagnosing uh, leptospira from the dogs. So yeah, at BioGuard, we, we have QMini real-time PCR analyzer, uh, where we offer a lot of leptospira panels, such as it can be a single panel, which can detect all the leptospira strains or species from the specimen using both blood and urine. And also in the, in the panel, it can be a single panel or, or, or two panel with other uh, pathogenic disease in combination uh, or a six panel where all the zoonosis diseases can be identified. So yeah, uh, for the PCR these days, uh, it's uh, through Cumini, it has become very convenient to uh, test uh, leptospira cases coming from the infect, uh, infected dogs. And when we talk about the specimen, for example, blood or the urine, of course, uh, uh, there's always a question which sample we should use for testing PCR. So yeah, when you have initial uh, uh, early stage of infection where you suspect that the dog may have leptospirosis, you can use blood as a sample. And of course, in the later stages, when the, you know, uh, the, the, there is a shedding of the bacteria through urine, urine can be other source of, in fact, uh, source of a specimen for the PCR test. So in, in short, I can uh, summarize you uh, to give you a very clear idea about how you can uh, start the diagnosis of leptospira if, you, if the vet or 
if you, as a pet owner, you are suspecting that the dog may have leptospirosis. So first of all, of course, when you see the clinical signs, you can go to the vet and of course, uh, to support, to give the support to the infected dog, the pet vet can start the initial uh, uh, antibiotic treatment. However, at the same time, it's, it's recommended that we should take out the uh, blood sample or urine sample for the PCR test. And if the PCR test is negative, we can go for the MAT test. And if the PCR test is positive, that is the case of likely be leptospirosis and we can continue with the antibiotic treatment for the dog. However, when the PCR test is negative, you can start the MAT, you can do the MAT test. And if the MAT test is negative, then of course uh, you can repeat the test in next seven to 10 days. However, if the MAT test is positive, but the pathogenic load is less than 800, then you can again repeat the MAT test to confirm the infection for in next seven to 10 days. In the third case, when the MAT test is positive, because it's greater than, the number is greater than uh, 1,600, then you can check whether it's because of the vaccination or not. So, uh, if the vaccination is there, but still you suspect that the dog may get have infection, then you can again repeat the MAT test in next seven to 10 days. However, if the uh, vaccination, there is no vaccination, but still you have MAT test positive, then it's likely to be leptospirosis. In the fourth case of the MAT test, when of course the agglutination is greater than uh, uh, 6,400, for example, then of course this is clearly a case of leptospirosis where you can continue with the antibiotic treatment for the dog. And let's get back to the first and the second case when the MAT test has been repeated after seven to 10 cases, seven to 10 days. Is. So if after 10 days, is, again, the MAT test is negative, then of course this infection or the uh, pre- uh, clinical signs that you have been seen are not the case of leptospirosis. However, if the MAT test comes again positive, then uh, or but still it's less than fourfold uh, increase from the previous one, then it's still not leptospirosis. Uh, but if the MAT if the MAT test is uh, greater than fourfold increase, then it's likely to be leptospirosis, and then. Of course, you can continue with the cases uh, for the, with the antibiotic treatment for the dog. So yeah, this chart is very simple, which shows that combination of both MAT tests, serological tests, point to care tests with PCR can help in, in diagnosing leptospirosis in dogs very clearly. So, uh, however, there are some other uh, uh, cases or uh, uh, diagnostic methods also there uh, in the reference lab, such as bacterial culture. However, these tests are not recommended because these really need technical uh, support or technical person to handle these cases. And, uh, and also, it's more likely to have the, 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 the conditions of the reference lab uh, to handle the pathogenic bacteria in, 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 in those kind of laboratories. And if some kind of mistake happen, that can lead to the spread of the disease to other humans as well. So yeah, that's why the most useful way is to combine a, a serological test with the PCR test that can lead to the uh, most uh, uh, best way to diagnose uh, leptospirosis in dogs. So after the diagnosis, of course, the treatment, as I say that the basic treatment start with the supportive, supportive care for when the disease is still in a mild stage. And uh, the dog can also be given a fluid therapy or nutritional support, uh, which can help the dog to survive uh, for, or to fight for the disease uh, in, 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 those two, in those stages. However, when it's seen that uh, the severity of the disease is causing uh, liver and uh, you know, kidney function dysfunctioning, then there are more 
or uh, more uh, supportive care have to be given to the dog uh, in a way that it needs an oxygen therapy. It also needs dialysis, for example, for kidney. And also in case of lung damage, it can need uh, mechanical, uh, mechanical breathing. So yeah, leptospirosis is a journey treated with antibiotics uh, and also through supportive care. And when we talk about antibiotics, uh, doxycycline is the most common antibiotic, uh, which is provided to the dogs in 5 mg per kg uh, uh, as a dose uh, in every 12 hours for two weeks. And after two weeks, it has been uh, it has been clearly monitored whether the clinical signs are improving or not. However, in some dogs, it also has been seen that there are some uh, effects of dexocycline, uh, uh, mostly in the puppies. Uh, so yeah, initially the penicillin is uh, given to the dog to give him a support for two weeks course uh, before the start of dexocycline. So, and in some countries, other than uh, doxocycline, uh, uh, androfloxacin and uh, clarithyromycin has also been administrated to the infected dogs for treating leptospirosis. And uh, if you think that the dog uh, is really recently exposed, you can also give dexocycline as a, in an oral administration for just for 14 days and see whether the clinical signs are improving or not. So yeah, a combination of both antibiotics and supportive care can, can help uh, for the better treatment of the dog at the early stages. And also uh, during the severe cases, the dog may need a hospitalization in the, in the, in the vet. In the, in the wet hospitals. So for the prevention of dogs, uh, basically the vaccination is the only way uh, so far known to, to have been uh, recommended uh, for the lepto to control the spread of leptospirosis. And yeah, these days there are, uh, as compared to the previous years, there are uh, many vaccines available in the market that is uh, covering most of the uh, Cirovas uh, strains of the Leptospira present in the environment that have been seen infecting the dogs. So compared to the old vaccinations, uh, uh, no, no BVEC is uh, Lepto4 has been considered as the best vaccine, which you can see is covering all the uh, Cirovas uh, that, can, that can infect the dogs. And of course, when the dogs are vaccinated, that will also reduce uh, human exposure uh, of, to the leptospirosis and also to the rodents. So yeah, so vaccination can be considered as a very important way to control leptospirosis in some areas where we have seen a lot of, uh, uh, lot of uh, uh, outbreaks in canines. Uh, and however, there is still a zoonotical risk uh, for leptospira spread in the environment, especially uh, when we talk about human and uh, canine relationship. We know that uh, most of the people when are having dogs at home, uh, and of course, those dogs uh, also go to the outside environment where we are not sure whether it is uh, it, it is it, that our dog has been exposed to the leptospirosis or not. So they are in that case is appropriate precautions have to be taken when the dog get infected uh, by the leptospirosis. And, and in that case, uh, you can have the you can create a barrier precautions uh, in your home and between the infected dog and also when one dog, is there and there you have other pets also at home. The barrier, creating a barrier between the infected animal to the healthy animal is very important. Other than that, you should also uh, be careful about exposing uh, the, uh, the skin or the mucosal membrane to the urine or the blood uh, 
because uh, as we know that the spread of the uh, bacteria mostly will happen through exposure uh, on the uh, you know wounded skin or the mucosal membrane uh, especially through urine and blood so yeah uh, we have to be very careful for other animals as well to have this precaution be taken carefully so infected dogs we should also uh, you know instruct our dog to you know urinate at a designated area in the home uh, so that once you want to clean the area it's is basically uh, very easy for you to uh, focus on that particular uh, part of the home rather than cleaning all home all the time. So use uh, proper disinfectants as the bacteria is very easy to be killed by disinfectants. So uh, you can use uh, disinfectants to clean your home, uh, which can also uh, control the spread of the disease. And once you are doing the, you know, or handling the cases uh, or, or doing the cleaning, uh, you should always wear gloves uh, uh, because it will reduce the risk of, of humans or uh, to get exposed to the bacteria. And also the same way uh, for the veterinarians who are dealing uh, with infected dogs or uh, canines in their clinic, they should also wear gloves and wash their hands properly after handling the infected dog. Uh, uh, after examination or while treatment. So yeah, uh, all in all, uh, Leptospira can affect people as well as uh, other animals to dogs. But the basically uh, what we can do is to avoid letting your dog uh, drink or swim in you know, rivers, lakes, or ponds, you know, basically outside of your home. And also keep your dog away from the farm animals and wild rodents because uh, since uh, rodents are the source of infection uh, to the farm animals as well. So when you, you should keep a great good eye on your canine to, to have control the leptospirosis spread into them. And yeah, if humans get infected, of course, uh, you should also consult a physician uh, to, to see uh, whether the uh, symptoms you are facing are of leptospirosis or not. Because if you have, uh, you know, immune uh, prone people in your home, such as, uh, for example, pregnant ladies, as I say that it can also lead to the, the leptospirosis infection can lead to abortion. So yeah, to avoid such cases uh, for immune compromised people, uh, the the other people who have the symptoms of uh, some kind of symptom of leptospirosis should concern physician for their advice. So yeah, thank you so much for uh, uh, listening to this talk, and also uh, please uh, follow our LinkedIn and Facebook page uh, for further updates on our upcoming webinars and also on our products and services which we frequently do updates on. And yeah, if you have uh, questions, uh, further questions to ask, you can type in the chat box and uh, seeing the type of the, uh, following the time, I will answer a few of the questions, yeah. So right now we have some time to answer a few questions. Let me read. Uh, so there's one question that can that say, can you please share a few blood reports of confirmed cases? Of course, uh, right now uh, I cannot share uh, because I haven't prepared those. But of course, uh, through our reference lab, uh, we have uh, some confirmed cases uh, because in our reference lab we have all kind of tests available. Uh, starting from PCR to other serological tests where we have confirmed the cases of leptospirosis. So uh, how many days it will be false positive after post-vaccination? So yeah, uh, for the post-vaccination, I think uh, because the, uh, the vaccination is recommended uh, for the uh, two, initially two shots, 
which are usually seen for the annual, uh, you know, like for the annual, for one year, the vaccinations will work, which means that the, the organism or the animal will have antibiotics. So of course, uh, if you see the early infections and, and the dog is recently uh, vaccinated, uh, the, it can be for one year that you will have uh, positive cases. Uh, however, considering uh, you need to do other tests such as PCR tests, because if the dog is really, the clinical signs are from leptospirosis, uh, the genomic material of the leptospira can be identified through PCR, because as the viral load is uh, you know, increasing, the, the, the PCR reaction will have, give you more CT value. What I mean that, what the QMINI real-time PCR give you both qualitative and quantitative results that can show you the uh, more excess load of the infectious infection. So that's how you can identify through using the combination of tests, not just one test. Yeah. And I have another question. Uh, what if the animal has severe compromised AKI? Should we keep administrative fluids if an anura and should use the dilutes or alternative therapies? Of course, that's a very good question that uh, for the treatment, yeah, uh, uh, when there is a severe cases and uh, immune uh, immunocompromised dogs, of course, the treatment, uh, the flu treatment is uh, one of the supportive treatment, but the main treatment is because of, is the administration of antibiotics, uh, antibiotics uh, into the, to the dog. So yeah, the vet will, will know that uh, based on the history of the dog, like when the antibiotics have been started and when they have to stop according to the improvement of the clinical sign. But the severe cases are basically the, uh, the, the stages where the dog organs have been infected. So that's how I can, I, it, it depends on uh, what, what severe cases you have been seen. Uh, that's how you can decide whether to stop the administration of the fluid or not. Yeah. So what kind of disinfectant agents is effective to kill leptospira? I think this is very common that uh, the journal disinfectants, uh, sulfur extents present, uh, you know, available in the market. Uh, are effective to kill leptospirosis. So there is no particular disinfectant yeah, which, can, uh, which I can answer in this case. How effective are the vaccination in prevention of leptospirosis? That's another very good question. Uh, talking about the vaccination is one of the uh, prevention method of uh, leptospirosis. However, uh, uh, depending on the set of work, uh, yeah, so uh, if, as we know that, as I can open this slide, you can see that the current vaccination, if you are giving to the dog, the first vaccination, it can cover all the strains or the species of uh, Leptospira uh, cirrhosis here, uh, which, can, which can try to uh, minimize the exposure or the infection of these pathogens to the, to the, to the dog. Uh, so, and it is recommended that an initial series of two vaccinations is typically given to the dog and, and an annual booster. Uh, yeah, but it depends on the condition, like how long the antibiotics uh, stays in the dog and uh, what's the condition. If the dog is mostly the pet dog or living in a very clean household environment, uh, yeah, one vaccinate, one course of vaccination is quite okay. But after a few years, yeah, <clears throat> if you think that your dog is very active in outside environment, uh, and, and that's how you can go to the vet to do the revaccination, yeah, based on the history of the dog. So let me take the last uh, question now. Um, um, I think most of the people are asking for the slides. Yeah, for the slides, I think if you have email address, yeah, we can try to contact you uh, and provide you with the slides. However, you can see the uh, copy of the video uh, to be posted on our YouTube channel. 
So yeah, please subscribe our YouTube channel as well because you will see the your video over there. Yeah. So uh, uh, following the time, yeah, it's been one hour now. So uh, for the rest of the questions, we will try to answer them, uh, to contact you and answer them. And yeah, for the people who have stayed here until now, they will definitely will receive a e-certificate from our side. Uh, yeah, so yeah, thank you so much for joining today's talk. And uh, we are very happy and privileged that uh, you have been very supportive uh, in, in with us all, all throughout the time. So yeah, see you next month with another hot topic we will cover and yeah, stay tuned to our social media pages. And yeah, thank you so much and have a yeah, good uh, evening. Thank you, Dr. Yeah. Susan, for the excellent presentation. And if you need a PDF file of the presentation, you can leave your name and email address on our Q&A Q &A board. Yeah, please leave your name and email address on our Q&A board, and then we can send the PDF file to you. Yeah, I think we can stay for another one minute if... if... Yeah, 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 please leave name and email address. And thank you very much uh, for participant uh, this event. And we'll keep this board for open for one more minute, and then we are uh, we are finish with this uh, webinar tonight. So for the for people, uh, yeah, uh, if you have inquiries about our uh, products, those for uh, uh, leptos for the diagnosis of leptospirosis. Yeah, you can contact us or you can contact me directly uh, and uh, we can provide you with more information on uh, how you can uh, use uh, our product for the proper diagnosing of leptospirosis. As I mentioned that uh, uh, in uh, we offer both rapid tests, which can identify the antibodies and also uh, for the leptospira species and uh, PCR test, which is through our QMini PCR system, uh, which is a real-time PCR system, uh, can give you both quantitative and qualitative results uh, for the diagnosis. And uh, these days, as you know that uh, in uh, mostly all the countries have the prevalence of leptospirosis regardless of vaccination. So proper diagnosis of leptospira is very important to categorize it from the infectious of other diseases, which can be very confusing sometimes for the veterinarians. So yeah, that's why we encourage that uh, uh, you should have proper uh, knowledge uh, of uh, these uh, common diseases in cases of canines to give a proper uh, treatment to the dog. And when we talk about the feline, uh, of course, I forgot to mention that felines are rarely seen to have leptospirosis infections. They can be incidental host, but compared to the dogs, which can cause some severe diseases sometimes, but in cats, it's still been uh, under study. It's not been seen that the cats are effect getting affected by leptospirosis severely. So mostly they are just carrying the uh, uh, leptospira uh, serova in their body. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think, okay. Thank you yeah. everyone. And hope everyone have a, a nice evening and yeah. join us again next month. Okay, bye. Have a good night. Bye-bye from Taiwan. Bye-bye.